प्रेम स्वरूप लारा जा तू लारा वो माई आई 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 वेलकम टू इनसाइड स्कूप a podcast that brings you practical servings of Swami's sweetest teachings. Our guest today hails from the beautiful land of Jacinta Ardern, lovely sheep and exquisite natural beauty, New Zealand, and is incredibly inspiring. I've personally been a fan of her authenticity for years, and she holds one of those CVs one can only dream of. She currently serves as the Deputy International Young Adult Coordinator of the SSIO. By profession, she's a professional coach, educator, and sits on the sustainability panel of Westpac New Zealand. Her academic record is no less stellar. A degree in economics and politics from the University of Auckland, she's listed as the University of Auckland's 40 under 40, and she's even got an MBA from Oxford and was recognized by the World Economic Forum as a global shaper. So in case that hasn't wowed you, she's also a multi-talented Carnatic music singer and plays the flute. Welcome, dearest superstar, Sister Shruti. Thank you so much, Nira. Um, yeah, it was a little bit uncomfortable, but all of, yeah, all of Sami's grace and happy to be here. Happy to be a part of this conversation. Thank you so much for being here. So let's kick things off with a new segment we call Third Speed Samsara. So, um... It's basically what I'll do is ask you a couple of um questions and ideally your answers should be quick and enter- entertaining like the third speed of a bhajan. And we call it <laughs> <laughs> and we call it samsara because um as you cross this cycle of questions it might be a bit treacherous and <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks for the warning Nira. <laughs> But we know you'll come out victorious. Um in fact, you have 5 seconds to think of a response. Um but uh you're not limited to 5 seconds in your answer. How does that sound? Sounds great. Let's okay, do it. Okay, perfect. Let's do it. Three things you could change about the organization. Oh, <laughs> straight into it, Nira. <laughs> Three things I would change. Um being more connected to our local places and native indigenous cultures i think is something that would be awesome mm. i um wonder how we can strengthen intergenerational collaboration and mm-hmm. really have more spaces where our elderly and our children and our youth are together which happens but i feel this is so much more that can mm. happen in that space and um less online activity and more in person mm. <laughs> person server I think is one that I'm feeling right now with a lot of zoom fatigue. Brilliant. In the lesson in less than 5 seconds you're smashing it. <laughs> <laughs> Your response to someone who says uh, spiritual organizations are a waste of time. Cool. I respect <laughs> that. <laughs> I still choose to put my time here, but it could be a waste of time for you. So, yeah. So I'm Sp- to that. <laughs> spoken like a true sadhaka. <laughs> Your response to someone who says spiritual teachers are a scam. Wow, that's a big one. Um I'm sorry you've had that experience. Mm. It's true there are a lot of scams out there. There are a lot of teachers that yeah, that I would that we'd question the legitimacy and you know, I'm I I think there might be some good ones out there as well, you know? I I invite you to be a little bit more curious because there's some some gold out there that that we might be missing if we assume that they're all scams. Very balanced. You're too you're too nice. <laughs> <laughs> you're not giving us no, the scandal that we're You're a scam. <laughs> you're a scam. Not yeah. the teachers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Three ways. Let's end it on a sweet note. Three ways Swami <laughs> makes you feel. Three ways Swami makes me feel. Oh, unconditionally loved and accepted as I am in a way that nothing or no one else can. Aww. Um Mm. <laughs> it makes me feel um yeah courageous to do hard things that I don't want to do. It mm. gives me a sense of okay this is hard but do it anyway. Mm. It's the right thing to do. And he makes me feel yeah inspired about what's possible. Inspired mm. about what we can experience within how we can contribute outside and what's possible through this precious life. beautiful sister like i think you've set the bar really high for this segment now <laughs> so shruti i'm going to jump straight to what's been on a lot of our minds recently 
And that is in this era of social media, it seems like there are many channels and accounts to choose from. And so we can be tempted to follow currently living teachers, would be gurus and influencers, all with messages that seem to resonate with us and our experience of Swami's teachings. How do you deal with this variety of choice? Mm. Yeah, it's a great question, Nira. And as you say, with social media, we're exposed to so many. You know, mm. there's so many pictures out there that we find on YouTube and Instagram and on TikToks and all the all the platforms. Um, yeah. yeah, it's an interesting question. I think one of the reasons I haven't felt that temptation is I feel so, 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 so lucky that mm. we know Swami. And I feel in a way that we are able to drink straight from the source. I mean, Swami is the avatar. He's an embodiment of God. He's not a human that attained Godhood in this life. He's not like a, I don't even know, like semi-avatar. There's, I think there's a technical name for it. Like <laughs> he's a full-blown, full avatar with all the avataric powers and aspects and wisdom and mm. perfection. And when we can drink straight from the spring in the mountain, why would we go to bottled water? You know, why would I get mm. bottled water? Why would I get tap water? Mm. When I can go straight to the source where it's undisputable, it's not about the kind, it's for everyone, it's universal. Like he's come mm. here for all of us. Mm. So I think that gives me such a confidence and a grounding mm. in Swami's teachings. Right. I mean, that said, I still enjoy learning from other teachers. I'm, mm. I know some Sai devotees are, you know, I'll only lead to read Swami's discourses and that's it. And that's that's my Bible. That fulfills me completely. Mm. No, I really enjoyed reading Eckhart Tolle. Last year I had the opportunity to visit Amma, the hugging saint in Kerala. And she's, you know, a living guru with an organization. Everyone has the chance to interact with her and have her embrace. And it was an extraordinary experience, Nira. And mm. I loved the opportunity to be in her loving presence. I felt it was a very powerful place and yet I was happy to have that experience and yet be grounded in my my place and the SSSIO like the teachings the structure um has really fulfilled me and to get more direct I guess to your question about um a living teacher I mean mm. I think for me in some ways not much I mean even when Swami was alive and we had a living teacher I mean the the beauty of his power is he had hundreds, thousands, millions of devotees. I wasn't mm -hmm. one of the students that was mm -hmm. consulting him for every life decision I made. Um, mm -hmm. And yet I felt his guidance and yet I felt, I mean, it would have been amazing, no doubt. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I had a lot of appreciation for those who've had so many close interactions. Mm -hmm. And yet I felt so fulfilled in a connection where I've, you know, with his grace, had the privilege to see him and experience him and yet not be so attached or mm -hmm. needing a physical form. You know, right. Swami's helped us find those answers in his teachings, in our hearts. And I think that's, there's no need or reliance on having a physical teacher. Yes, when they're there, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think for those that have that, or well, we've had that with Swami, amazing. Though he's given many of us who live not in India, not in Prashanti, the chance to, to experience his love and experience his teachings and experience his guidance, clarifications mm -hmm. in, in other ways. And, and that's, that's given me so much that I, What's what would I get going somewhere else? You know, there's right. there's no no um, yeah I can appreciate other teachers I can mm. still learn from them but there's no there's no pull when mm. I when I feel quite not even satisfied but wow it's like Jesus was alive and we met mm. him Krishna was alive mm. and we knew him like mm -hmm. wow I'm I'm wow I feel very full I feel very grateful lovely so you talked about your your interaction with the hugging amma which was hugely transformative. And for years, many of us young adults have had the experience of performing in front of Swami. Swami would take photos with us and manifest gifts. We've had the opportunity to have a conversation with him and clarify doubts. Mm. These opportunities for direct experience are no longer available for the new generation of young adults. How does participating in the SSIO keep these generations of devotees engaged in their spiritual inquiry and their spiritual practice? Yeah, 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 it's a nice question, Nira. I think one thing that's unique about SSIO mm. is um, is the structure and the reach it has. Right. I mean, I remember being at like, in university days and traveling and going to another country and finding a local size center and feeling right at home. Mm. Because we've got this kind of universal structure where we've got budgeons and study circle and seva and like you could show up at a budget and you know half the budgeons and you could take part in a seva and you feel like the people that greet you are like 
closer than your friends that you've known for mm-hmm. years sometimes because you've got this intimate connection through Swami who's so yeah. core to our lives. Right. And so we've got this this kind of common structure all mm-hmm. around the world that, I mean, Swami, of course, is designed to perfection. It's so relatable. It's so easy to find your place in the three yeah. wings, um, which is just extraordinary. And I think, you know, I think about friends who have like part of churches and there's, I don't know if there's any organization that's quite the same yeah. in terms of having some kind of unified structure mm-hmm. yet touching you know, every corner of the earth, more or less. Yeah, there may be small places, or some, but more or less, you know, more mm-hmm. than 120 countries, right, with size centers. And so that reach is phenomenal. And mm-hmm. that structure, I think with the three wings and, you know, having the chance to go to SSC, having the chance to take part in study circles, be a part of the youth program, take part in Seva, sing bhajans. I mean, I, I feel Swami has given us like a full three course meal. It's like, mm. it's like, you know, everything you might, everything you might want, all the parts. It's not like, you know, some, some organizations or teachers just focus heavily on meditation. I did a right. Vipassana course. Amazing. Right. I mean, I love the meditation, but it was, it's just very like, you know, one aspect. I remember actually reading a, an interview between John mm. Hislop and Baba in one of his books, mm. where Hislop, who was an avid practitioner of Vipassana meditation, which is the practice Buddha used, mm. Ah, Swami, you know, what do you think about the past? And he had spent decades in serious meditation. Mm. And Swami said something or his realization in this conversation was, I mean, it's it's fine, but it doesn't invoke love. Like, right. The love aspect is, is lacking. Mm. And so and so I look at, you know, there's all these, you know, organizations with their approaches and their methods and past they emphasize mm. and do more Kriya Yoga, do more this, do more that, and mm. each to their own. You know, I have full respect. Each one can choose what draws them. And, right. and I'm not here to say this is the path for everyone. But speaking from my own experience, there's something about the holistic nature, the mm. variety and the depth and the relevance, perhaps even mm. for this day and age. You know, Swami's mm. come for the Kali Yuga and said, this is the kind of, it's Seva, it's Seva, mm. it's Namasmarna that's really going to, mm. you know, sing bhajans and serve. Like, that's going to be a lot easier than doing, you can also meditate, of course, and everyone's on their own path. But there's something about the relevance of the time Swami has come mm. and the way he structured the organization that I think is very unique. And I don't know of any other organization that has that in the same way. And I think that's just, wow, a real, there's a place for all of us, I feel. Absolutely. I completely agree with you when you say that the structure, the um, holisticness of the organization is quite different to is quite unique i mean when i it's a global network you could go anywhere in the world and you'd find a home and you'd find friends you'd find a support system um and that that's really really quite extraordinary isn't it um and you've Mm -hmm. obviously had a long association with the ssio and swami so i'm curious to know how has your involvement in the ssio impacted you professionally we talked about you know all your accomplishments how has the SSIO played a part and Swami played a part in that in that would your life have looked different without the SSIO and Swami 100% yeah 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 yeah. it's hard it's it's really hard you know when we've grown up with Swami it's hard to imagine life without Swami it's like Mm. imagining life without I wouldn't say it's, you know, it's like without a close family member in a way. Mm. Like, what would life be like if your mother didn't raise you? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's 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 so foundational. Mm. It's so foundational. So I think, yeah, absolutely, um, you know, Swami's played a, a pivotal part. I guess to give you some, yeah, some examples. Yeah. Um, one, I mean, this is kind of embarrassing here, but people used to tell me <laughs> when I was really young, but I was like, my teachers would say I was super talkative. I was really that Whoa. annoying kid in class. These, these parents, oh my God, parents of like, you know, like other family friends, aunties and uncles would say, when Shruti was like five or six and coming to our homes, we used to be worried, what's she going to break this time? <laughs> and keep everything really safe and secure because she's a bit, a bit aggressive and naughty. And, you know, I see all these tendencies that were there you know, very raw as a child. Uh, I see the insecurity I had, you know, as a right. child, a lot. Mm. And I really feel through SSC and, and um, you know, the teen youth program, especially just being inside company, Swami's really profoundly transformed my own character and helped me become more calm, become more mm. confident, feel much more secure, mm. feel much more courageous. And, and that kind of, I mean, yeah, transformation I see through my, my early years and the mm. kind of foundation that gives us for life, even discipline, you know, as, yep. a, 
filled with a mind running everywhere, you know, mm. sitting in SSC classes and learning meditation or silence sitting when mm. we're five, six years old, like, wow, the kind of impact that has on our minds and our lives is huge. So, I mean, that's kind of one one thing I can really notice and I've heard people say, oh my God, you're a different Shruti, you know, um, <laughs> to the one I knew when you were young. And um, I think there's a huge piece around my own like professional work and mm. I feel Swami's really given confidence and courage to not feel confined to follow a traditional path right. and to not, you know, I remember a lot of my, my peers and classmates would, you know, take go into, especially the Indians, go into medicine or go into mm. engineering and, right, and I right. really felt Swami gave me the confidence to go, what is it that, that speaks to my heart outside yeah. of the status, outside yeah. of the pay, outside of the fear of security, the fear of people being impressed by what you do, like what is it that really calls me and he gave me the, the courage to study my own path I did an arts degree which was unheard mm. of in our community in some ways and mm. and then like create my own work and start my own businesses and sell mm. them and grow them and live in four or five different countries work in a little you know rural community in India then go all the way to the UK to study in Oxford like there are, ex there are experiences that I think were only possible with Swami's guidance and direction and the confidence to to leave things and start things and try things and, and feel courage to follow one's own path and not follow a prescripted path Absolutely. And even the, the shape yes. of that, I mean, the entire shape of my work, I feel again, is all, it's all Swami, you know, mm. I feel very passionate to, to look at how do we address the environmental crisis? How do we address poverty? How do we reimagine business to be more values based? And I feel all of my work and in, in, in essence is, is a, is how do I share Swami's teachings? Well, firstly, right. live it, but how do I bring that to the students, the clients, mm. the groups we work with? And so, I was like, if I didn't have Swami, I wouldn't have a job, probably. <laughs> I wouldn't have anything to do. <laughs> I wouldn't have an approach to right. be this depressed, kind of purposeless, like insecure, like kind of you know person moaning in the corner and really worried about the world. So I, I mm. feel, I mean, those are just a few examples, but there's so many in terms of the mentors, the satsang, the teachers the space of bhajans, the challenging moments, losing a job mm. and feeling worthless and feeling Swami's given confidence in those moments, the ups, mm. the downs. I mean, he and the organization both have been a constant through living and working mm. in different places and different life stages. So um, huge, huge, huge impact in every way. Brilliant sharing, sis. I completely resonate with your childhood tendencies. My parents often complained of how bossy and unnecessarily competitive I was as a child. And it really only was through Swami and the SSI that I was able to work on those insecurities and feel a little more at peace with myself. And I completely agree with you that Swami through the SSI provides a toolkit for managing life, whether it's the discipline, the resilience. In fact, an example of that for me would be how a large chunk of my time as a lawyer is spent reviewing bundles of documents. And I'm convinced it was meditation and Vedas during Balvikas that has given me a slight edge in being able to sit for hours without getting distracted, regardless how boring the topic can be. Mm. And that final point you raised is brilliant. You know, how Swami's unconditional love and values, bolstered by the many inspirational figures we, we see in the, in the organization, gives us that, that courage and wisdom to reflect on who we really are and want to be and want to achieve. And without the external noise of societal expectations. And that's why I witnessed so many in the organization shine in all aspects of their life. With that authenticity, we we kind of carve our own space in this world. And I think the most sustainable happiness comes from being yourself. 100%, yeah. And finally, that positivity you talked about, how you're not depressed despite how dark and gloomy and uncertain the world is. And thank you for highlighting this because it actually aligns with a recent study by Harvard University, which identified that it's not money, it's not rank or status that makes people happy, but relationships and the connections we forge that lead to higher life satisfaction. And they even mentioned things like book clubs and church groups. So I'm sure we can all agree that the connections we make in the SSIO are unreal mentors, buddies for, for life who are genuine and, and so uplifting. You know, whether it's moving to a new country or needing support with life events, personally, my SAI friends have never failed me. This brings me to my next question, actually. There is a 
perception that sadhana, spiritual practices can be done alone. We don't need an organization. Just meditate on our own, sing bhajans on our own, do our own charity work, you know. How would you respond to to that? Mm, I feel that, you know, Swami says, tell me your company and I'll tell you what you are. And yeah. I feel the easiest hack to spiritual growth is just to be around people that are like embodying some of these teachings yeah. for people you want to be like. Right. And I think specifically, for example, um, to a time I just finished university and I'd moved to Melbourne for my first job. I didn't really know right. anyone there. And of right. course, the Sai family kind of took me in. Yeah. And it was a time in my life of making a fresh start. You know, I, I new friends and who am I in this new context, you know, living on my own for the first time. And it was mm. a, yeah, it was a, a, a real transitional moment. And when mm. it came to thinking about like, who do I want to be friends with? I just started, you know, going to the organization events and youth events. And I thought, wow, like mm. what inspiring humans. I want to be like, I want right. to be like Lizelle. I want to be like Shadda. I want to be like <laughs> yeah. these people. And so I started getting to know them and spending mm. time with them. And I feel just by virtue of, of good company, mm. my passion for Swami grew, my desire for Seva grew, my mm. interest in his teachings grew. Mm. And I didn't have to do anything. It just happened on its own. It right. just rubbed off on me. And mm. so I think Swami even talks about an analogy where you know, it's like fire when there's like hot coals around, the fire is much more likely to spark. Mm. And and the more of that there is, uh, you know, the, the more the more likely that, that spark or that truth or that wisdom or that potential can be realized. So mm. I think for sure, I mean, the company, as you said earlier, that mm. the organization gives us is amazing, let alone the benefits when we are working cooperatively on projects and mm. learning unity, you know, teamwork, sacrifice, coming up against hard personalities. I've definitely in my time as a coordinator, I really don't get this elder. Why are they saying this? Why they, mm. you know, mm. it really makes us reflect and it's not easy. Yeah. But there's a lot of learning and richness that right. comes from working with others, adjusting to others, understanding others that won't come if I'm on my own, you know, doing my own server or my own, my own sadhana. Right, right. Um, and is there a specific attitude, you know, we've spoken about all these benefits. Is there a specific attitude we need to have to ben- maximize these benefits that we speak of while we serve in the organization? Yeah, I think, I think a lot, Nair, one that, that feels quite relevant for me right now, mm. what I'm conscious of is as a coordinator, um just resisting the temptation to complain and blame right. because sometimes in these hard moments you know mm. it's post pandemic there's not always a lot of engagement sometimes we invite a whole bunch of youth to something and people aren't responding or right. you know like it's been a tough time there's a yeah. situation more broadly in the organization like there's a lot going on the world mm. situation economic crisis and it can I, I noticed there can be a tendency to go oh, if only the leaders were different if only the situation were different and to kind of and to kind of diffuse ourselves of responsibility and feel like a victim i Mm. think that's what we have to be careful i have to be careful to avoid Mm. when it creeps in and go actually i'm in this position what can i do yeah what's my contribution how might i be affecting the problem and how could i be a part of the solution and having that humility of you know we're in this together for a common goal maybe some of the current approaches aren't ideal maybe some of them could be different how can i be a part of that how could i work with others and bring others on the journey and Mm. and really be conscious of how we can create more unity rather than Mm. more division in a time Mm. that's already quite divisive right and i think remembering that swami doesn't need the organization right Mm. that the aim of it was to realize our divinity so how many people attend the you know the events we're organizing or how many projects we push for the year is secondary right and in fact if we're doing it not in the right spirit it's counterproductive because it's it's basically like Swami has created this artificial environment to allow us to progress and to assess that progress that we're making. Yeah, you articulated it so well. You yeah. know, somebody doesn't need it. <laughs> need the organization at all in a flick of a wrist. He could change, you know, all the hearts if he wanted. And I, I'm reminded of, yeah, one of the quotes we were sharing in the leadership program last weekend, mm. you know, the Swami says, what, se- what Seva does to you is much more important than what Seva you do. Mm. You know, and the same applies in the organization. Like what, whatever role we have, maybe it's setting up mm. the alternate budgets, maybe it's coordinating a satsang, whatever. What that does to us 
um, mm. is so much more important to, than what we do. And sometimes it's yep. easy because the rest of the world is like that. It's about numbers and mm. outputs and seeing things and feeling good about the results. Oh, yep. <laughs> awesome that we planted 100 trees and what a beautiful contribution to Mother Earth. And it mm. is. But what did that do to me? Do I feel more sensitive to Earth's mm. suffering? Do I feel more compassionate? Do, how, mm. do I feel more... You know, what, what is it... What is it doing to us is, is really the, the magic and the purpose, as you said, of the organization, our transformation. So, I, yeah, I just really, really agree with um, all that you've expressed so articulately. love how you frame that. And I'm going to remember that every time I get a little bit frustrated when people aren't <laughs> responding to me, my text with my WhatsApp messages. Um, oh, my God. So, uh, um, <laughs> You know, uh, this is, has also been a question that I've been toiling with. How do you, so the relevance of the organization is highly dependent on its teacher, but how do you differentiate a genuine teacher from the less genuine? Are there green or red flags that we can use as indicators? Um, it's a tough question, Nira. Somi's <laughs> <laughs> um, told us, no, that... Um, there are many, many, many fake gurus and cheats out there. And mm. I mean, I feel a bit sad, but it's the reality when we go to India. You, know, you can you can kind mm. of see it and feel it and you can see how mm. religion and spirituality, I guess it's probably happened to some degree in, in a lot of our faiths, has mm. become quite commercial mm. and sometimes becomes more about the money and the, the name and the fame mm. than really the essence of transformation. And so I think one, one kind of signal is, um, yeah, do I, you know, what do I, what do I sense? Is really underneath this and how much of if there's a, if there's a strong commercial focus money focus mm. um fame like seeking seeking numbers seeking disciples seeking you know i think that's that's one thing to be wary of mm, mm, mm. um that that can be a bit of a signal i think another mm. one is to what degree does this teacher really um sincerely embody the values and the teachings mm. that they they speak about and i mean swami's and I mean, you cannot point to fault. <laughs> yeah. Um, every aspect of his life is love, sacrifice, tolerance, purity. It's such a, yeah. it's such a degree. Um, I feel that with Amma as well. You know, mm. there are, I, I feel for her, for example, I feel she's really, uh, you know, from from my experience, uh, very genuine. And yet, you know, there are teachers out there that, you know, might not be practicing all that they preach and may mm-hmm. not be the embodiments of their teachings and and therefore may not be able to take us to those teachings ultimately now ultimately we just want to reach the goal and so how well placed will they be I'm, I'm not sure but I think perhaps the last the last piece to touch on is um you know Swami's also said I mean you don't really need a guru mm-hmm. like you know I mean you've got we've got Swami we've got our hearts mm-hmm. teachers can come and can be useful for mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. um and it's at some level, yeah, anyone and anything can be a teacher to us. But mm-hmm. just if there's a, a need or a, a, a right, I'm trusting that Swami will give us what we need, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and through his teachings, through our hearts, that might be sufficient. And if, if someone needs to come around, you know, life will send that. But, um, but just I think if that desire is there to seek that, just to, just to be aware of that and see mm-hmm. where that's coming from and, um, and to kind of draw some confidence or faith that, yeah, we actually have a lot already. We have so much <laughs> teachings already and um, that, that we've been given, yeah. Very helpful point is this. And Swami was certainly Bidu Tell. I mean, he led a revolutionary <laughs> life. Nothing that he said he didn't already practice. But some of us, especially, I was speaking to uh, some of the young adults in the Western parts of our world. They shared how, yes, we love Swami, we love his teachings, but because we don't have a very strong connection with our religion, um, we have difficulties sharing, you know, the concept of a guru or a teacher in the Western world. It, they can be a bit hesitant to explain that relationship. So how, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I really acknowledge that, Nira, and I have mm. such respect for, you know, the Latin Americans, the Russians, the yeah. Western Europeans, people in like, Iran or places, you know, where this is really not the norm and you can even seem crazy to be running to <laughs> India to follow this teacher with this big afro. So I really, and it's just not, it's not normal. It's not yep. normal. No? I'm like <laughs> us Indians who've got a hundred you know, pictures now <laughs> of all the teachers yeah. and deities. So, so I really just acknowledge how hard that can be. Yeah. Um, in terms of how to share about Swami in that context, mm. I think the most important thing perhaps or the place I would begin is sharing 
how my life has benefited from Swami's teaching. Mm. It was a question you asked me that I struggled to answer because it was so it was everything. Mm. And I think sharing that, sharing that I'm more peaceful, that I'm more calm, that I'm mm. more kinder, more patient, mm. um, I feel more compassion, whatever that might look like. When these challenging situations happen at work, I'm willing to stand mm. up for what I think is right, even though mm. it's not what my manager wants to hear. I'm 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 willing, you know, like sharing those kind of examples of how we are different, I think like that that speaks gold, whether it's, mm. you know, and my son even says, you don't have to even speak about me, speak about my teaching. So, mm. so I think that, that perhaps is the most important. And I think what will touch people, uh, touch people's hearts and help them feel mm. just the, the the impact and the power of Swami and they'll see that in, in you and then mm. hear that you know in, in your words it's again that that be do tell um if, if then if then you could you know if it actually comes to to sharing Swami himself I mean there's a I think there's a few things we can do we don't have to kind of dive in depending on the audience or context with Swami's the avatar he's an embodiment of you know supreme mm. peace and bliss. it can be quite a bit, in, a bit yeah. intense but yeah but kind of approaching it as you know Swami is a guide or a teacher, like right. you know, we all have many guides and teachers and, and kind of choosing words that might be more relatable. And if they're curious, you could share more, but but kind of starting with something that's not, and it's not a lie, it's very, mm. very true, but perhaps not, you know, just being conscious of what is going to be more palatable. Right. Um, so I've, I've used that before. He's he's my spiritual teacher. He's a guide, mm. um, even not using the word guru, which might have certain connotations, again, depending on the group. Right. And the... The last thought um, on this near is I think in our in our kind of global context nowadays, this conversation around diversity, equity, inclusion is now this big buzzword, especially in the corporate world. I hear it lots in government contexts. How do we um, really respect different cultures and be really inclusive? And that's beyond just quotas of how many you know black people or indigenous people or mm. racial minorities are in organization but how do we explore and really adopt different worldviews in the spirit of inclusion and equity and diversity knowing right. that from diversity comes um richness comes innovation comes creativity comes so mm. many good things I think that's quite well like increasingly mm. well recognized in the western world and those those words are used and so in that context to share oh this is another another worldview like in mm. our in our western religions you know we think of you know jesus or we've got the kind of single god and um and here's another worldview you know here's a different worldview like this mm. there are hundreds of worldviews, and there are yeah. many approaches to spirituality and some have gurus and some have teachers and there's the dalai lama some are constantly reincarnating and there's some that you know like some indigenous groups that find god in nature and that's their deity mm. and and just to kind of normalize that there are many 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 ways of conceiving and experiencing mm. god that are right. all valid including the dominant one including mm. the one that most people in that community might identify with mm. but it doesn't mean these are the, the dominant one is wrong it doesn't mean this is it's mm. one or the other but i think swami's message of all rivers lead to the ocean you know all our paths yeah. um really allows us to take an inclusive approach and in sharing that this is just another approach um and and perhaps that will inspire a little bit of interest um in the listener to to think about what might exist beyond the ways they've always conceived of god or faith or spirituality in their own life phenomenal sharing thank you so much Riti. such profound practical tips packaged like poetry unsurprisingly i've learned loads from you today yeah listeners it's now time for some prasalam pills one when you can drink straight from the mountains, why drink bottled water? Two, even if the pandemic taught us that we can and may even enjoy isolating, there is immense joy, motivation, and strength in numbers. Three, whilst Google may provide us information to navigate life, Swami, through his various programs in the organization, provides a platform to apply that knowledge and find our inner wisdom. Four, what service does to you is far more important than what service you do. The relevance of the organization is what we choose to make of it. Are we flowing with life with greater ease, becoming kinder, purer, more disciplined, more understanding, less judgmental, living simpler lives filled with purpose and humility? Until next Friday, happy scooping! <laughs>